God bless each and every one of you on this beautiful morning. Amen? Yes, it's gloomy and ugly, but that's okay because today is the day that the Lord has made. Amen? We're going to get started with our service. If you could please stand, we're going to open up to the book of Daniel. I've been in the book of Daniel and I'm like, whoa. <laughs> so we're going to open up to the book of Daniel chapter 4, verse 2 and 3. When you have it, you can say amen. Amen. And this is King Nebuchadnezzar speaking to his, to his people. It says, I am pleased to tell you, tell you about the miracles and wonders the most high God has done for me. Amen. I think we each can say at least that, um, something that he's done for each and every one of us. How great are his miracles and how mighty his wonders. His kingdom is an eternal kingdom and his dominion is for generation to generation. Amen. We just spoke on that. Amen. Last Saturday. Amen. Father God, we give you honor. We give you praises. We give you glory. Father God, we thank you for the rain. Lord, I know we need it. Father God, but we pray those that are, have to travel in it. Father God, give them traveling mercies. Lord Jesus. Lord, we pray that you have full control of this service, Father God. Those that are tuned in, Father God, give them a double blessing, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. amen. This is the day. This is a day. This is a day that the Lord has made. That the Lord has made. Oh, I, I will, will rejoice. rejoice. I, I will, will rejoice and be glad in it. This is a day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. I will rejoice, I will rejoice and be glad in it. Sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord as we offer up to you the sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord as we offer up to you the sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord as we offer up to you the sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord as we offer up to you the sacr
sacrifices of thanksgiving as we offer up to you the sacrifices of praise. We bring the sacrifice of praise into the house of the Sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord as we offer up to you the sacrifices of thanksgiving as we offer up to you the sacrifices of praise. Come on. What am I? Let Jesus higher, lift him up for the world to see. He said, if I be lifted up on the earth, I will draw home and unto me. Come on, lift him, lift Jesus higher, lift Jesus higher, lift him up for the world to see. He said, if I be lifted up on the earth, I will draw home and unto thee. What kind of church is it? A sanctified church. What kind of church is it? A sanctified church. Cause we're a hand clapping, foot stomping. Tongue talking, Pentecostal church. What kind of church is this? A sanctified church. What kind of church is this? A sanctified church. Cause we're a hand clapping, foot stomping. Tongue talking, Pentecostal church. I've got it. I've got it. I've got it. I've got it. Something about that Holy Ghost. I can't explain it, but I got it. I've got it. I've got it. I've got it. I've got it. it. Something about that Holy Ghost. I can't explain it, but I got it. Look what the Lord has done. Look what the Lord has done. He healed my body. He touched my mind. He saved me, oh, just in time. Oh, I'm going to praise his name. Come on. His name is just the same. Come on and praise him. 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 Look what the Lord has done. Look what the Lord has done. Look what the Lord has done. He healed my body. He touched my mind. He saved me. Oh, just in time. Oh, I'm going to praise his name. Come on. His name is just the same. 
pray. Come on. Come on and praise him. 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 Look what the Lord has done. We bring the sacrifice of praise into the house of the How many of you know that his name is power? Amen. Come on. Why? Because we want his glory. Amen. Come on now. Oh, I'm dying up here. Amen. <laughs> Jesus, your name is power. Jesus, your name is mine Jesus your name will break every stronghold Jesus your name is life Jesus your name is power Jesus your name is mine. Jesus, your name will break every stronghold. Jesus, your name is life. Healing. Jesus, your name is healing. Come on. Jesus, your name is sign. Jesus, your name will free every captive. Jesus, your name is life. Jesus, your name is healing. Jesus, your name is sign. Jesus, your name will free every captive. Jesus, your name is life. I want your glory, Lord, more than anything else. I want your glory, Lord, more than life itself. I want your glory, Lord, more than anything else. Come on, tell him. I want your glory, Lord, more than life itself. I want to feel you, Lord. I want to feel your touch down in my soul. Oh. Down in my 
want your presence, Lord, more than anything else. I want your presence, Lord, more than life itself. I want to feel your love down in my soul. Holy Spirit, take control. I hunger for, I want your presence, Lord. I want your presence, Lord, more than anything else. I want your presence, Lord, more than life itself. I want to feel your love down in my soul. Holy Spirit, take control. I hunger for, I want your presence, Lord. I hunger for, I want your presence, Lord. Amen, amen, amen. It is no secret what God can do. Come on now. It is no secret. What God can do, what he's done for others, he'll do for you.
Sometimes gently singing Our hearts in one accord Come on now, how many of you got the victory, amen? Come on. I've got the victor living in me. I've got the victor living in me. I'm not moved by what I feel or see. I got the victor living in me. I got the victor living in me. Come on. I got the victor living in me. I'm not moved by what I feel or see. I got the victor living in me. So I will sing and I will dance and I rejoice for the battle is the Lord. There's no defeat and I'll rest for the victors won the war. I got the victor living in me. I got the victor living in me. I'm not moved by what I feel or see. I got the victor living in me. I got the victor living in, in me. me. I got the victor living, living in me. In me. I'm not moved by what, what I feel or see. I, I got, got the victor living, living in me. So I will sing and I will dance and I rejoice for the battle is the Lord. There's no defeat and I'll rest for the victors won. I feel all see, I got the victor living in me. So I will sing and I will dance and I rejoice for the battle is the Lord. There's no defeat and I'll rest for the victors won the war. Amen, 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 amen. It's with honor. Tommy. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. 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 Can you hear me out there? Yeah. Hallelujah. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There we go. There we go. Can we hear me? Can we hear me? Amen. Amen. Look at that. Brother Eric, thank Woo! you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Hallelujah. Thank you so much. I only need one more thing. Thank you, Father. Bless the Lord. Glory. Amen. How many came with a with a willingness to learn something from the Lord today? Amen. God is good, amen. God is good, amen. Thank you, Father. I want to bless the Lord for each and everything that he's been doing in our lives. You know, we've entered this year very blessed, yes, very, very, very blessed. I mean, um, last Sunday's service was, was something uh, very, very marvelous. Praise God. You know? Praise God. Last week's service was, was very, very marvelous uh, yes, in many amen. different ways. Um, Coming off of the, the the marriage conference into Sunday service, boy, we had we had church. Amen. This this Amen. altar became an operating uh -huh. room again. Yes, it did. Uh -huh. yes. Yeah. and that's that's a blessing. Amen. We have to come to church with that expectancy of receiving something, right. and when you see G Jesus walking by, uh -huh. you need to reach out and try to get a hold of him. Right. right. right? The woman with the issue of blood tried everything else. That's right. Left her with nothing. That's right. And she heard about a man named Jesus. Hallelujah. And when Jesus showed up, she made every effort. She scratched and clawed. Get out of my way. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show up. 
Amen? Amen. Bless the Lord. Amen. Amen. It's good to be here in the house of God. Amen? It's Sunday morning. That's right. Sunday number two. That's right. Sunday number three. Uh-huh. Sunday number three. I'm, I'm lost. I lost a Sunday there. After New Year's, I think. So we find ourselves in our lesson here. Principles for a Christian household. Uh The Word of God is building strong families through the Word of God as we understand our roles, right? Um, Sister Monica, may you please uh, give me a hand. Last week we went through uh, Genesis and Jesus or God realized that man should not be alone. So man gave him or or God gave man a helpmate, right? We went through this little, 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 little uh, topic. If if, if you could help me, uh, please, I'm going to, I'm going to put this on the floor. Can you, can you grab that side? Hold it up. God gave me a helpmate. Not someone who's going to be beneath me, but somebody who's going to help me share the load. Does that make sense to you guys? Jesus knew that me by myself, I might not be able to pick it up, or maybe I'll get hurt and throw out my back or something. I don't know. But he brought me a helpmate, one suitable for me. Thank you. That's just a little going back to Genesis. Our partners are helpmates because that is the original design of God. Not one more and one less. Yes, the word of God says that maybe one is the weaker and one is stronger. But that's okay. That's still the design of God. Right? That's still the design of God. I have muscles sometimes. My wife has more muscles than me. It used to be reversed before. We find ourselves in the book of Colossians, chapter 3, verse 16. Amen? Amen. And and I'm going to be reading right here out of the book. The scriptures are right there. My notes are right here. The first scripture right there, it took me a little while to get out of that first scripture, Pastor. It took me a little while to get out of that first scripture. Colossians chapter 3, verse 16. Okay? It says, first, I'm going to pray. Father, as we come before you and we enter into your house with thanksgiving in our heart, Lord, Lord, we, we, we come with an expectancy to learn this morning. Please allow our hearts to be open so that we can receive something from you. Maybe not 100% of what's going to come out is for me, Lord, but let me have the part that's mine. Let me receive the part that's mine. So, Father, I give you honor. I give you praise. In Jesus' name, I say amen and amen. I'm going to read chapter Uh, 3 verse 16 in Colossians, it says, Let the message about Christ in all its richness fill your lives. And then there's a comma and it says, Teach and counsel each other with all the wisdom he gives. Sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs to God with thankful hearts. That's a lot of scripture right there. That's a lot of scripture. We're going to kind of dissect it a little bit. So it says, let the message of Christ. What's the message of Christ? When people ask you about Jesus, what are they asking you? What are you, what it comes to mind, what do you tell them? Ooh. How do you spell that, Brother Eric? E T E.
I was just testing you. So the message about Christ is that we can have eternal life through Christ. That's the message about Christ, right? What else comes along with, with, with the message of Christ? Love. What's that? P-A-T-I-O-N? Oh, see, Brother Tommy didn't finish high school. Love and compassion. You mean the message about Christ has love and compassion in it? Right? Let the message of Christ in all its riches. You mean the message about Christ is valuable? It's like, it's like precious gold. What does the world hold precious today? Money. Bitcoin, stocks, property, uh, titles, social status, position. You know, for, what's that? Oh, they have, they want to know how many friends they have on Facebook. So there, there's a few things that I wrote down on my list, okay? Um, the message about Christ. He left his home in glory. You know that? He stepped out of heaven. He didn't have to. But he did it for you and me. Right? How about this one? This one's this one this one's more about me than anybody else, right? I don't know about you guys. How about that? Do you need to clean yourself up first? Do you need to go to the second hand store like Brother Tommy and buy a bunch of stuff that looks good? We don't have to do nothing. Christ takes us as we are with all of our hang-ups and all of our shortcomings and all of our bad language and all of our bad habits. Right? right. But he, he never needs it. Wow. I think that one's pretty good. L-E-A-V-S. He never leaves us. I should have probably put a space right there. Forgiveness. forgiveness. What about forgiveness, sister? Forgiveness Man. Forgives us of all our sins. That's the message of Christ. That's the beginning of this scripture here. That right there is what we should hold on to in our lives. Because then it goes on to say, Fill your lives. Let the message of Christ in all of its richness. Fill your lives. Sister. Carries her. Man. I'm glad he carries her because sometimes I'm at work. I can still pray for her. But physically. Sometimes we need help physically, right? My my partner just came and helped me. Do you have a partner? Pastor has Jesus, she says. I find myself thinking about some things that my dad did. 
I don't know why. I'm going to start crying. Right? I was talking about it a little bit this morning. Right? Why did my dad choose to buy a 15-passenger van? We didn't have that many people in our family. Unselfish decisions. He bought a van so he can take people to church. I remember getting ready and jumping in the van with him and going to pick up people for church. Unselfish decisions. If we base the decisions that we make on selfish and unselfish, where would we be? A lot of times we make decisions because I want something out of it. I'm not doing it unless I get something out of it. But here we're talking about the message of Christ. Everything about what Christ does for us is unselfish on his part. Make sense? And then, yes, we love the Lord, Pastor. But when we get what we want, sometimes we, we go the other way. Sometimes we love ourselves more than we love the Lord. Right? It's raining outside. The, the roads are blocked. And Caltrans is telling you to go the other way. Ah, maybe I don't need to go to church today. I'll watch it on Facebook. Selfish versus unselfish. The message about Christ was very, he done very unselfish things. Everything he did was unselfish. When he talked to people, when, when he corrected people out of love, it wasn't so that you can see that I'm smarter than you. No, Jesus didn't do it that way. Let the message about Christ in all of its riches, richness. One of my um, points was that he paid the price for us. He didn't have to, but he paid the price for us. He died and he rose again and he's coming back one day. Amen. That's the message of Christ. Amen. Amen. Amen? When people ask you, what, 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 tell me about Jesus Christ. And then the last one, even though it's a long word and sometimes I have time spelling. Uh-oh. This is a hard one. He loves us unconditionally. That's right. Which is sometimes a different from the way that we describe the love we have. Sometimes we only talk to people because we like them. And then we have a group of people that we just stay away from. And then we have a group of people that we pour into but we're talking about families this morning right we're talking about families we're talking about mothers and fathers children the message about Christ should be in our lives so that was the message about Christ can we agree that that this is yes brother yeah. Yes, you can. Amen. There, T H I E R. Say it again, sir. Yeah, I heard but loves you too much to leave me there. And yeah, yeah, T H E R E, yeah. Believe me in my mess. He loves me too much for that. Right. Wow. That's pretty unselfish, huh? Yes. That really describes a mother or a father that corrects their children out of love. I get it. I understand that you haven't really... Uh, you, you, you need to stop throwing your clothes there. You need to stop doing this. You need to stop doing that. 
But we love you so much that not only do I realize that that's where you're at right now, I'm going to help you get past this area that's not working in your life. Amen, Brother Ray? We have things in our life that do not work in our life. I think that's... He loves you as you are, but he also... We, we heard that yesterday, huh? He also loves you so much that he doesn't leave you there. He's going to tighten the screws a little bit. He's going to push you a little bit, right? He's going to do that, right? Right? I get it. You fell down. You scraped your knee. But get up. Come on. Don't stay there. Amen? The message about Christ... The message about Christ. We have to understand what Christ is to us and, and how much He loves us so that we can show that in our actions. The scripture says, fill your lives. And I had to stop right there. How do we fill our lives with the message of Christ? How? Ooh. That's kind of a... That's kind of. Uh oh. I'm writing too fast. I heard prayer. Uh, that's how you. That's how you fill your life with the message of Christ. No, we're trying to see. The, the scripture says, "Let the message about Christ, in all of its richness, in all of its value, in all of its awesomeness, let it fill your lives." The Word of God is teaching you and me, right? The Word of God is teaching you and me. The message of Christ in all of its richness, let it fill your lives. How do we fill our lives with the message about Christ? Reading the Word of God? Being obedient. Wow. Uh, OB. Obedience to the word. We started here, right? Reading the word of God. The word of God tells us to stay in prayer, to communicate. That's one way to fill our lives, to stay connected and plugged in. Obedience is beautiful, right? Because when we're not obedient, there we go making those decisions that only benefit who? Me. What about church? Man, that's one of mine. Uh oh, two L's. Fellowshipping. The Bible says don't forsake the fellowship. Since COVID, there has been many people that have wanted to just be comfortable at home. And yes. Through technology, we are taking the word of God into the homes of people that might not be able to leave home. But then there are those that can leave home. I smile sometimes when I see people with a handicap placard and they don't look very handicapped. They're just doing it so that they can get good parking. Am I, am I lying here? I'm not lying. Some people want front row parking, but they have the ability to walk. I've heard them thank the Lord for their healing. Obedience, prayer. Here's one that I put up. Here's one of mine. How about this? 
Because reading is one thing. How about studying? Right? Digging deeper. We're going on 20 minutes and we haven't even got through uh, 10 words in one scripture. Dig deeper. Dissect it. Take something out of it. We're trying to fill our lives with the message of Christ. How about worshiping? Can you feel yourself? Can you feel your life singing songs like, I love you, Lord. And I lift my voice. So that I can worship you. All my heart. We have to remind ourselves sometimes. Take joy, my king, in what you hear. Let it be a sweet, sweet sound in your ears. Sometimes just worshiping the Lord a little bit by yourself before you turn the car off and open the door and enter this world that is full of chaos. So we fill our, our, our lives also with peace. Fill our lives with peace. Joy. Man, turn the phone off a little bit. Turn the TV off. Lock the doors. Brother Ray. Man. Why can't we? There are some things that sometimes we fight ourselves. We fight our own inabilities. We're the ones we're all stressed out. We're the reasons we're all we don't have no more money. We're the reasons why we're paying the bills. We're the reasons why this we do it to ourselves. And yes, children don't have a care in the world. Oh my gosh, I wish I could be five years old again. I would even wear the A-team shoes that you bought me. Everybody had Chuck Taylors, right? Everybody, all of them, running around. And my mom came home with a pair of Mr. T Converse. They, they weren't even Converse. They just said A-team on them. I was like, you're going to get me beat up. I don't know why that just stays in my mind, you know what I mean? Everyone's wearing Chuck Taylors, and my mom brought A-team sh shoes. Mr. T. Mr. T was on my, my black high tops. I wish that I didn't have a care in the world like a child. But see, we are children, why? Right? I am the head. Not the tail. I am on top and not on bottom. And pastor says, we need to walk with our head up high because we are children of the Most High King. Sister Vicky, you had something? Brother Eli? Believe in God. That's how we fill our lives, Brother Eli? Trust in Him? Don't go this way or that way. Don't go to Madam X. Don't go to the, 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 the newspaper and look for your, uh, uh, your horoscope. Who else had their hand up? Sister Vicky. Amen. Ooh. APP. L-Y. I'm going to put parentheses and underline it a few times. Reading the Word of God is one thing. Taking it and putting it into your life so that it shows. Right? We're, we had a little conversation this morning about, well, they do know. Okay. But does it show in their lives, right? Does it show that you've been reading the Word of God? I can hear you. You memorize things really good, and I can hear you speaking it. But is is it coming out in your life, right, brother, brother uh, Dan? Wow, 
That's how you fill your life? We should take the message about Christ in all of its riches, fill our lives, and it should be so overwhelming in our lives that that's what comes out when we talk to people. Brother Eric. Ooh. This is our this is where we, we dwell at. Amen. That makes the Lord feel you know good. Amen. That's a very unselfish act to go and welcome a visitor that you've never seen before. That's very unselfish. Right? Go and welcome them. Greet them. You have your hand up? You're just playing with your hair? Okay. Reading the word of God, this is how. We fill our lives. And there's a reason why we fill our lives. Because that's where the comma goes. And it says, teach and counsel each other. Hmm. Teach and counsel each other. There's a reason why we read the Word of God. There's a reason why we study. There's a reason why we allow this to come into our lives. It's not just so we can sit there, right? Pastor says sometimes we're like spiritual gluttons. We're so, we're, we're so full of the Word of God and we're not doing nothing with it. We're not sharing it. We're not doing nothing. Remember, our lesson is about principles for the Christian household. Mom and dad need to Allow themselves to get the word into their lives so that it comes out. Now we're teaching and we're counseling each other. Teaching and counseling, to me, that describes effort. Can you teach somebody without any effort? What does that mean you got to do? Say it's my child, okay? Teach and counsel. Just spanking them and scolding them every time they do something wrong, is that teaching? No, it's not. That child's going to grow up and hate you. But when you take the time, here's the effort part, right? When you take the time to show them what's wrong, explain to them, maybe you might have to do it once or twice or three times, maybe even more than that. That's the effort part, right? But a mother or a father has love for a child, and then we're back to the unconditional, right? Unconditional. Meet you where you're at. Understand that, yeah, there's some things that are wrong, but we're going to work together to get you past to the next area mom and dad we have to allow the word of god to get into our lives so that we can teach so that we can counsel my notes say that effort is demanded and then that word again selfish and unselfish when you take what you've learned and you share it with the brother or sister or your children, that's very unselfish. Right? Just because you can memorize and speak half of the Bible by heart, what are you doing with it? The Word of God is telling us that we should be teaching and counseling and sharing and fellowshipping. Being an example, pastor says. Right? Don't just tell me you love me. Show me. Isn't that what your kid's saying when they're getting spanked? Right? This hurts me more than it hurts you. I don't know about that one. That's, that's a saying that I don't know where it came from, but they should have kept it in their brain. Right? Sometimes our children are scared. 
They're upset. They know they're busted. They know they got in trouble, right? They tested the limits and the boundaries, and here we go to put the smash down. Don't do that no more. Crying. Leave them there in the corner. Go to bed. You're not even getting any dinner. Now they're hungry. What are we proving by all that? Is that love? Is that the way Jesus treats us? Every time we let words fly that aren't supposed to come out of our mouths, is that the way Jesus treats us? Every time we hold something against somebody that we really, we should have let that go a long time ago. Or we probably even said we let it go, but we're still holding on to it. Right? Unconditional. Unconditional. Teach and counsel each other means that I am always willing to look for a chance to talk and to share. But I cannot teach and share if I'm never with you. Does that make any sense? If we don't ever get together, where's the opportunity to share with one another? Uh Uh-oh. Well, I couldn't make it to church. I'll watch it on Facebook. Okay. There are people, God bless each and every one on Facebook, that are commenting and, and they don't even live close by. They're in Texas. They're in Mississippi. They're in Arizona. They're wherever they're at, right? But then some of us are here. We have the ability to be here, right? We have the ability. Brother Ray, he don't even have a car, but he's here. Right? Effort. And it's not the same when you watch it on, on, you know, the internet or wherever, because I've done it, like, I always watch it again. I love watching it over and over again, you know, when we have our service. But when you're here, I don't know, I, I myself, I feel the spirit more than I do on the internet. I believe that the spirit of God is so so powerful that it can reach through the airwaves. I do believe. But then there is something about being here in the midst. And if you were here in the beginning of our service last week, the Spirit of God was so heavy in this place. This, there, there, there was opportunity to get your blessing. There was opportunity to get your healing if that's what you wanted. There was opportunity to cast your cares and let the Spirit of God take them away. There's still that opportunity, but come on, last week was special for me. It's been a while since I fell to my knees before the, the presence of God in this place like that. It's been a while. And you know what? There's nothing wrong with it. There's nothing wrong with humbling yourself before the Lord. He's the one in charge anyway. We can act like we're in charge, but we're not in charge. I I better finish the scripture. We're going on a half an hour. Let go and let God. Let the message about Christ and all its richness fill your lives. Teach and counsel each other with all the wisdom he gives. Sing psalms and hymns. Spiritual songs to God with thankful hearts. How many of you guys got a special song that you like to sing? Music for me takes me into another place, Pastor. If I want to change my mood, I can look for some certain songs. There's a few songs. I wasn't even... In the right place with the Lord years back. I had something in my hand. I was drinking something that I shouldn't have been drinking. And listening to songs that would just bring the spirit of God and bring conviction to my life. It took a while. But the Spirit of God convicted me. But God. There is a difference. Right? We talked about it this morning. (laughs) 
The Holy Spirit enemy E N E M Y The Holy Spirit brings conviction. And your enemy brings what? Condemnation. condemnation. He comes to condemn you, to bring shame and guilt and make you feel bad about what you did and laugh at you. That's what the enemy brings. The Spirit of God with love, right? Brother Tommy, you probably shouldn't have said it that way. Mm. And then I feel like this big, right? Because now my wife's mad at me. She's over there washing the dishes three times. What does that conviction mean? Conviction is to convict. And yes, we are pointing out and it is revealing what is either wrong. Let's think about it like this. When you're brought before the court and you're found guilty, right? You're convicted of something. They've accused you of something. They've let you know. They've enlightened you. There's evidence. You did it. The Holy Spirit comes to let you know, yeah, that was wrong. Okay? But the devil comes and tells you, look at you playing the part, pretending Acting like you're a Christian when the whole time, look at you when nobody's watching, look what you're doing. That's the difference. The Holy Spirit is not beating you over the head and treating you like garbage. But it will let us know when we're wrong. Now it's up to us whether we're going to pay attention. Amen? The word of God comes to bring enlightenment and conviction, like, oh, right? I haven't been filling my life with the message about Christ. I haven't been reading. I haven't been studying. I don't take the time to teach. I don't take the time to counsel. The Spirit of God comes to let you know, hey, it's time to get better than you were yesterday. But then there's times when, it's a good thing I don't have a sticker on the back of my uh, bumper. Uh-oh. We are trying to learn from the Word of God how to get our lives in order so that our household can be in order. Make sense? When we fill our lives with the Word of God and the Word of God brings conviction and correction and the next thing you know, ah, I need to change this. We catch ourselves. We catch ourselves. Right? Yeah. But then you also have the enemy trying to condemn you, right? You could have a co-worker condemning you. You could have your spouse. Sometimes it happens that way, right? Your partner, as you guys are working on your relationship, you guys are, my wife calls it, throwing mud at each other. Throwing mud, throwing mud. 
We recognize that in our lives, right? We need to quit doing that. Right? It got to where Brother Tommy, when he gets mad, instead of talking, he writes it on a piece of paper, leaves it there. I have a question. But because I raise my voice too much, she thinks I'm yelling at her. I'm not yelling. That's just the way I talk. But because I love this woman and my partner, and I want to bring our household into order, I will change what I am doing because I love her. And because I want our marriage to honor God. How are we honoring God if she's mad at me and everybody can tell? Uh oh. Does that make sense? Who else is watching? Ooh, you mean those little pitter patters? They're watching. They're seeing you one way in church, praise the Lord, hallelujah, and then at home you're throwing stuff. They're all watching, right? Your boss comes and tells you something and you feel like he's picking on you, and then the old person comes out. Fool, you better back up off me. Right? It's a constant battle. We're always, we're, we're, we're a work in progress, right? But again, we want our household, we want our marriage to honor God. And the word of God is coming to us this morning to explain to us when we fill our lives with the message of Christ and how he conducted himself and why he stepped out of heaven so that he can love you so much that he paid the price that you couldn't pay. He didn't have to, but he did it. <sighs> Go ahead, brother. Through the Holy Spirit, I don't like that word conviction. So I always say that spiritual spanking from God. It's a spiritual it's spanking. Yes. I receive it correctly and I believe it in my life. And I, so without that, I, I don't think I'm advanced anymore. If you think about people in the society, in, in, in society in general, you know, in the secular world, you know, there's people that are convicted of things and they never learn their lesson. Oh, yeah. All the time. They continue to do it and do it, right? The three strikes you're out law is a law called. Uh, three strikes you're out. But in other states, they called it a habitual criminal law. That's what it was. This individual's not going to stop doing what they're doing. Just leave them in jail. California said three strikes you're out. Brother Tommy got the two strikes. If Brother Tommy was caught doing something, I don't know, I would probably spend five to seven years just fighting the case. Craziness. Conviction. Either you're going to learn from it and you're going to change from it or nothing's going to happen. And you're going to go on conducting yourself in a way that probably needs to change, but it's up to you whether you change it. So singing hymns and singing spiritual songs, this is how we stay in the presence of God. This is where I read the book. The next instruction in this passage says, Sing songs and hymns and spiritual songs to God with thankful hearts. It suggests that filling our lives with Christian music provides an atmosphere of worship, whether we are at home or engaged in corporate worship. Singing songs and hymns should put you in an area of your life to where you want to be. You're, you're in connection with the Lord. 
I, I remember some of the old records that my mom used to play. I mean, I was just running into the house to get a tortilla with butter. Right? Throw a piece of bologna on the, on the burner, roll it up in a corn tortilla, and vamanos. I remember. But there was music in the house. There was an atmosphere of, of the presence of God there. So that was modeled to me. So when I found myself in a different atmosphere, I didn't like it. What are we modeling for our children? What atmosphere are we putting for our children? Because when they find themselves away from mom and dad, they should feel uncomfortable in a different atmosphere. Does that make sense? Right? But when the atmosphere we have at home is just like the neighbors or the friends or the cousins that don't serve the Lord, if the atmosphere at home is the same, they're going to be comfortable there. They're going to continue doing what everyone else is doing because there's nothing different. But when we have a household that has that atmosphere of worship and praise, and in this house we say please and thank you. Yes, sir. No, sir. May I? Can I? When it's that type of an atmosphere and then we're around people that don't say please and thank you, something should be, something, something should, uh, should register there. Right? I didn't even know it. Me and my wife were talking about it. You know, my, my, my sons, they, they, they talk like, like they heard their dad talk. They worked for me while I was the boss. And as an inspector or an engineer or the project manager came and I started to conversate with them, yes, can I help you? What is it we need to get done? Very professional, very nice. So now my children, they were within earshot. They talk like that now. Now they're not serving the Lord. But what was modeled to them is what they do in their life now. Does that make sense? Yeah. I mean, I don't understand um, how if they didn't like the way they were brought up, why are they doing it? You know, they're doing the same thing that their kids are in a sense. So, I, well, I think, well, but like you say, they're not serving the Lord. Not just your kids. My kids. No, I, I'm hearing. Um, So I, I, I get what you're saying. There was a time in my life when I drank and I smoked and I partied and I treated my kids. And then my son, once he's two Hennessy bottles in, tells me I'm, the, I'm a worthless piece of garbage. And I was the, you know what I mean? I was the worst father that ever walked the face of the earth. But yet he's drunk and he can. That's what you're saying, right? That's exactly what you're saying. Right. Well, me personally. This is one of my prayers as I come on Monday nights and I ask the Lord to work in this area. Sometimes it is hard. But then I have to make the effort. You remember the effort part? To teach and to counsel, right? I am now filled with the Holy Spirit and the Word of God. So I have to make an effort to go to my son who doesn't serve the Lord to his household and take all the love and all the goodness that I have over there. As many times as I have to. I made a date for two Saturdays from now. Papa's going to buy pizza and wings and we're watching the Royal Rumble. Because my grandkids like the Royal Rumble. 
But it's more than that for me. Again, I am inserting myself and all of my goodness and the word of God and everything that I learned over here. I am inserting it into their lives. I know my son is not serving the Lord, and I know that they're not. And I know they're doing stuff that probably that they, they hated when they were kids, and I don't understand it, and I don't know how to grab them and shake them and slap them. I, I can't do that no more. They're big, right? They'll probably beat me up. But I have to model it. I have to show it. I have to be there. You cannot teach and counsel like the Scripture says if you're not there. That makes sense? Good morning, Jacob. How are you, mijo? Good. Good to see you this morning. It's because we, we, we were examples to teach him in the wrong way. And the enemy, of course, ties that in. And yes. We always do that. We yes. Him, and the world is always putting things into their lives. And, and, and we that's our prayer now. Our prayer is for our kids. We never taught, we never taught you guys how to drink to smoke, to do drugs. We never had that in our house. She's right. She never we did. We never were examples that way. We didn't cuss. We did not. We did not do this with our children. No. And look at the way they they turned out. Because of the enemy. Of course, we'll try to sneak. He prowls around. He's, this is He's looking for a nephew. Who? Their friends. From school? So we here I I remind myself we should have spent more time to be better examples with them. Because we were out doing the work of the Lord and the kids were at home. See, we shouldn't have left them so much. We should have been better examples to pray for them, to bring them. We sat at the dinner table. We sat at the dinner table. Guilt, that conviction, that's the enemy. I, I couldn't worry. I just, I had to learn when they were in, involved in the gangs. I had to learn how to spiritually fight. Eric? <laughs> I had to learn how to fight spiritually. <clears throat> Why? We can read, but we have to apply that. Ooh. No weapon formed against me is going to prosper. No. God is with me all the time. And I have to stand on these. And so I had to learn <clears throat> the word of God. I had to apply it. I had to work on it in my life so that did I know down the street, down the line, something was going to take place in my home. I did not. But God was preparing me. See, we always have to have that preparation. Ready because the enemy is like a roaring lion seeking who he's going to devour. And, and so those are my children were with my, my brother, my sister, whomever. My other family members that drank, smoked, and done everything. <gasps> the Yabaras. <laughs> the Mendes. <laughs> the whoever else's. And I couldn't tell them, don't go over there. Mm. All I could do is, Madeline needed to get on her knees and that and said, teach me. Teach me how to fight in the spiritual realm. Because I didn't birth my kids to be behind jail. I didn't birth them to be on drugs. I did. They were born. I, I gave them to the Lord and I dedicated. And I have to stand on that. But I have to be a better example. Mm. I do. I do. With them. Amen. I wouldn't let their kids, their friends come over and drink at my house. No. I think one day that I was gone... And Manuel had some <gasps> stuff inside of him. Who's Manuel? Uh, yeah. And, that was his friend. <laughs> and, and, and I told him, who, who, who brought this into my house? Blah, blah, blah. Ooh, Eric. And he said, I just Hi, said, you know. I said, all right. Hi, Ericito. You are not to come back to my house because you have defiled my house. Amen. You broke the rule. We don't do this here in my house. And 
if I don't stop them, even my own family. Yeah, stick to your, stick to your, cousins, stick to your guns. My own in-laws that because we didn't drink, we don't want to have Christmas party at your house no more. It's okay. But I have to show that I have to stand. There's the example. I have to be that example. I can't let the enemy come and destroy what God has done in my life and, and rob my faith. I think it's so, it's so simple <clears throat> for the enemy to start to like get you to be lazy and relax and put your guard down. Just because you love your children and you want them around and it's okay to do this, it's okay to do that. And then once it gets out of hand, the devil's laughing. Brother Joey, I'm sorry. Yes. It's not on us anymore. Yes. They have come to a point of accountability where they should make the division between they did it to me and, and, and then it's, it's their fault. At a certain point, you know, like I, I, I deal with people and they say, a nun hit me in my hand with a ruler. I said, well, wasn't that 40 years ago? Why are you still under that? Own it. It's them now. It's yep. not the example totally, 100% that was lived before them. Now it becomes them. But in the process of that, the enemy will put a blind spot and they cannot see right. that they are what they presented as the the, the Bible describes it like a veil, right? That's right? Some people got a veil, That's right. right? And the enemy will do that, right? That he comes to they, trick us. And, it, it, and, 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 and it's hard to fight the devil physically, right? The book of Ephesians talks about it. It's very clear, right? Our fight is not against flesh and blood, right? <sighs> not fighting against people made of flesh and blood, but against evil rulers, authorities of the unseen world against those mighty powers of darkness who rule this world and against wicked spirits in the heavenly realms. That's Ephesians uh, 6, uh, 10, and I think I underlined everything all the way to almost 20, I think. That's why we need to stay close to God. We need to stay in our word. We need to stay in prayer because the enemy is as a roaring lion. He's seeking to devour uh, those that we love ourselves to destroy them and there's ways there's we can't there's things that we cannot help them with yes reading studying fellowshipping worshiping praising right and then my notes say to turn it over here it says here holiness is that a way to stay close to the lord and in the lord is to be holy how about sacrifice remember that word unselfish and selfish sacrifice yeah, it's raining outside. Yeah. And, and yes, Brother Tom, uh, we're not holy where we're in cloud nine all the time. Nope. La, la, la. Nope. We are so, no, but when we do wrong, which we do which, every day. All the time. Which we do every day. And then there's that word conviction. God brought up the conviction to say, God, I shouldn't have yelled at that car that was road rage. You know, I was I was singing. I was Sister Karina. And the enemy came and threw something there. But what did she do after? I mean, that's why we put our shield of faith there. But that's how we learn that that conviction, so that we don't do it again. And if we do it again, we repent again. And if we do it again, we repent again. Until finally we say, No, devil, you're not going to get me this way no more. And we have to. We have to strengthen those areas because when I am weak, he is strong. He is strong. Amen. 
We can quote, quote these scriptures and we can do all this. Brother Joey so, so beautifully pointed out that, that he loves us right where we're at, but he loves us so much that he's going to help us get to the next level to keep pouring into us. My wife's had her hand up there for about a half an hour, and if I don't let her say something, I'm going to get in trouble. Now he has four kids. kids. It's a constant battle. It's a constant battle, Sister Karina. So it was like after my parents apologized to us, I think that's when we had the choice. There you go. So, and some of us accepted it and some of us still are holding on to that. So I think it's all gaining wisdom, um, the conviction growing, you know, maturing and stuff. And to know that, like the mom just said in the chapter, that, you know, we've lived this life and we're learning as we go. Yes, ma'am. Amen. It, it, for the people, sorry, who don't, I think it's like contentment in yourself and knowing, like, hey, you know what? It's, I don't own it no more. You know, I apologize. Now it's in their hands. And sometimes it's unfortunate because we don't sometimes get that. Like, we don't get that forgiveness, you know? Yeah. The enemy is always looking for a way to bring guilt and shame. The enemy's always looking for it. I'm sorry, I can't read it from way back there. Colossians 1, 5 through 6 explains why our ears must stay alert. 
Verse 9 and 10 says, Once we have heard what we have, the word, tell your family and your friends. We should always be, that's the effort part that I've been talking about, right? We should always be looking for that way and that reason and that opportunity to insert ourselves because we're the ones that learned. We're the ones that know. We have the goodness of God. This is why we're supposed to fill our lives with Christ, the message of Christ. So that way when we end up at quinceañeras and we're sitting next to that family member that doesn't know the Lord, we can wait for that opportunity to insert the word of God. Birthday party, we just got through with Thanksgiving and Christmas and New Year's. And again, we're the ones that know. The veil has been removed from our eyes. So we have to be the one to, to do it. And yes, I'm sorry, Pastor. This is, this is, and, and I'm not trying to go ahead of it. It's okay. Your lesson there, uh, principles for the Christian household. So this makes a difference. Our household should not be like, a, like someone that is a non-believer. Should not. Because they will live totally different than you and I. Yes, they will. And so we, as we're going on your, on our book here, of course, the book of Titus, and not going ahead here. It's okay. Not, as men and as women of God, we have a responsibility in our mm. homes to show. We have a responsibility in our homes to teach, not not only the verbal, but just with our the actions, silent, the silent teaching. We mm -hmm. teach better by showing someone than by telling them. Mm -hmm. Because when we say something, they're going to take your word for it. Mm -hmm. And so they're going to remember that and they see our actions contradict that. Of course they're going to tell us that. But that's why the Bible reminds us the older men, the women, the older older women, we need to teach our youngers now. But it's not happening because we haven't gotten it together yet. As as older men and older women we still want to run around like like teenagers or like adolescents and, and not make the decisions that we should be making at at 20, at 30, at 40, 50, 60, whatever our age. Because there is a generation coming up yes, there behind is. us. What are we leaving to that generation? Yes. I want my generation, I want not only my children, I want my grandchildren, I want my nieces and my nephews to say she was a woman of God and I want I want to Amen. live that way. Amen. That they would see that difference like, oh I didn't know I didn't know she was like that. No. No. We we have to not that we walk on cloud nine. Oh. No. We are not so holy. No. We are not we make mistakes. We do that. But this is where God will help us to mature in our lives, in our homes. This is what our lesson is for. Strong homes, strong families. Yes. Strong families make strong churches. Yes. Which in turn will make a strong community because it will fl uh, funnel with each other. It will flow. We will, we will be different people. What comes out of our house flows to our community around us. <coughs> now I'm not cussing at the at the neighbor now I'm not throwing dirt on their on their yard uh -oh. now I'm not doing that now I, I'm helping that homeless person now I'm helping someone less fortunate yeah. you know there's just so many things but it all begins in our homes in our of homes. who we are what are we teaching who are we what are our what are our examples and the Bible talks about those things what we should be and how we should be you know, what type of decisions have we made so that we can teach those children, those family members, you know? The Lord is re uh, uh, reminding us as parents that, you know, we're, we're responsible. We should be making that effort. Those of us that are older in the Lord, right, should be teaching the younger ones, right? Should be. But I go... Pastor, I'm sorry, but 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 I dig a little deeper. How can you teach somebody if you're never in church? How? 
How can I teach my children if I don't insert myself into their life? How? You're not. By, by the comments I make on Facebook? By what they see on Instagram? The stuff that I repost? Until that word conviction comes into our life, yeah. we change. Because then I, I am convicted to know that I've done, there's something wrong here. There is something wrong here. And we, as an individual, need to feel that. I am the last person to be judgmental because of the way that I live my life. Okay? And I don't judge somebody because they're doing something that I don't do anymore. My children aren't serving the Lord, but that doesn't mean I separate myself from them because they're drinking or they're smoking. They know that if you're going to do what you do with them. I'm here with the, with the grandkids, whatever. I still love them. But if I never place myself with them, how can I ever teach them? For me, it's just that part right there. That, that part of never being present. I, I, I cannot find myself there. But that, that's, this is where God has put you at, Brother Tommy. And until God puts the next person, that person. Oh, no conviction over there. In, in there, until they are convicted from that through the Spirit of God, will they work more with ah. and be in presence in, in their, more involved in their children and family's lives. Brother Dan. There's the guilt and the shame, brother. There's the guilt and the shame. Right. But uh, I have to rely on God now. Yes. You know, I, I cannot be convicted by the way I raised him, you know, and, and the world all these years. You know, I accept that. I own it. But now I release it. I, I give it to God. That's it. I'm turning my life over to God. But I have to be consistent with it. Yes. And they have to see that. Yes. Yeah, no wishy-washy. Yeah. The day will come Amen. That. You hold on to that, brother. Yes. And, 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 and we are. Um, Colossians 3.16, we, we, it took an hour, almost an hour and a half to get through that. Verse 17 says, and whatever you do or say, right, do it as a representative of the Lord Jesus Christ, giving thanks through him. To God the Father, whether you're at work, whether you're at church, whether you're at a family gathering, wherever, it doesn't matter. Do it as a representative of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, there is. Amen. She was standing in the middle of me and Grandma Rock. Amen. And all I heard was a cry of this generation crying for help. Crying for help. And we can't do that. We can't be there. We can't sacrifice that family time because they drink. I love my son. Like you said earlier, unconditionally. Unconditionally. 
unconditional. Amen. That God mends it. That's right. That God brings them back together and takes away that addiction of yes. drinking and smoking. That he does it now before the kids are older and doing the same story. Same song and dance. Same song and dance that the devil did with us. We're going to match it. And there's no way to break it if we're not here. If we're not fellowship. You know, the Lord has placed me and my wife in, in, in certain areas of our of our Christian walk. You know, we, we've identified different things in our life and in our children's lives. And yeah, just like pastor, the situations that we're going through in our family drive us to our knees. The Lord's teaching us. He's, he's probably trying to teach you too. But are you going to your knees? Or are you going to Facebook? Or are you going to the comadre? Right? <clears throat> Pastor was talking about the book of Titus, chapter 2. As for you, Titus. This is Paul talking to Titus, I believe, right? Promote the kind of living that reflects wholesome teaching in in the king james it says sound doctrine i looked up the word wholesome the definition is the quality of being beneficial and generally good for you so Paul is telling Titus, promote the kind of living that reflects something that is beneficial and good for you. The opposite of that is unhealthy, bad for you. What does our life represent? Good for you or unhealthy? It says here in verse 2, teach the older men to go to exercise self-control. I underlined it and highlighted it, right? Some of us need to build those, those muscles of self-control. I got an opinion about everything, if you ask me. But sometimes we need to use self-control. And maybe what they want to hear is not my opinion. Maybe what they want to hear is the Word of God. Maybe they just need to vent. Maybe they just need to get it out. Who knows? The verse continues and says, <clears throat> it says, teach the older men to exercise self-control to be worthy of respect. Right? Don't just tell somebody, you need to respect me because I'm a man of God. We need to promote a lifestyle that shows you're a man of God, right? My friends knew that we weren't drinking at my house. It was Eric's friends. I'm telling on them. <laughs> Tommy did do stuff that wasn't right in mom and dad's house, but I waited till they left. I didn't do it in their presence, right? I respected pastor. I respected mom. Enough not to do it. But to be honest, there ended up coming a point where I was so deep in my ugliness that it came out. Right? We, we can't. You can't just leave it hidden in the closet so that you just do it when nobody's watching. It's going to take over your life and come out. It's going to. Exercise self-control so that you can be worthy of respect 
and to live wisely, they must have sound faith. How do we get sound faith? We have to get into the Word of God. We have to show up to Bible study. We have to show up to Sunday school, right? Be filled with love and patience. Now, the next verses are the ones that I'm glad we don't have tomatoes in here. <laughs> Teach. No. Verse 3 says, similarly, teach the older women. This is the word of God talking, not me. <laughs> to live in a way that honors God. You mean, is there, is there a way that we can live that doesn't honor God? I thought you were a Christian. Why do you talk like that? Well, that's just the way I am. Right? Right away, the hair goes up in the chongo and the earrings come off. Right? Come on. Yes. <laughs> the lessons come to enlighten things in our life that are contrary to what needs to be happening in our life. Now then it's our choice to either fix it or just continue to live in sin. That's what it is, right? Continue to live in sin. It says, live in a way that honors God, they must not slander others. Really? Why does he choose the women? <laughs> Clucking like hands. I like that. <laughs> they must not slander others or be heavy drinkers. You know, some people take that portion right there and they're like, God allows me to drink. God allows me to drink. God allows me to toss back a few. Yeah, but when you're slurring your voice and, 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 and all that, you know what? Brother Tommy, there is no just a little bit. I didn't do it with drugs. I didn't do it with alcohol. I didn't do it with the way that I was running around with my friends. I was 100% that way or nothing. And it, it affected my life. When you wake up in the morning and nobody wants to talk to you, it's because your jokes aren't funny no more. You said something and you did some stuff that's making your family not like you no more. That's me. I'm talking about me here. I don't know about you, but that's me. Brother Tommy had to finally say, you know what? I need to stop conducting myself like this and I cannot drink anymore because drinking doesn't help. Right? I was leaving work early so that I can go home and start drinking. Wow. Did I care about work or did I care about drinking? Dinner was ready and I was too drunk to even get out of bed. I was just drinking. Brother, J Brother Ray. Amen. Like now I have to show that to my son and my nieces and nephews how to be the man of God that my mom showed me how to be when she was here. It's like, it's like this is my curse. You can break that generational curse right then and like that's what I'm Yes. We, what I'm doing now. Personal choices, Brother Ray. Personal choices. Yes. That's it. Yeah. You can either walk off the cliff or you can go that way. Right? It's, 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 it's really simple. So not only should they not be heavy drinkers, instead they should teach each other what is good. So women should be teaching other women? Really? What, what, what should they be teaching them, Pastor? Honoring God. Oh my lord. And, and you know, I don't I don't talk to too many men to see that, but men get into the little gossiping things. <gasps> but women have that already that that tag that uh, that pretext it, or it, it yeah. Is there that, that we have to break we're talking about breaking chains. We have to break those things in our lives so that we are not talking about people and criticizing people and judging them and being 
leave that area and then and then hallelujah no 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 we our kids hear us and then then they 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 make a comment about that person and now where did you, you don't be saying that well where do they hear it from from us they hear the adults uh, talking they hear the adults talking and and we should not be talking about other people that way and sl slandering means to put them down yes slander is ridicule to, is to throw mud at them slander is to put that area where where you know and so but we have to stop those things because it will continue and that's generation after generation we do have to we do have to. We have to put a stop to it. We have to recognize it. But when we go to the Word of God and we allow the Word of God to get into us, well, then we can analyze and we can look at ourselves, right? I've been saying this already for you draw a circle around yourself, and then when everything inside that is circle is right with God, you're doing okay. Stop pointing out their faults. Work on you. Right? My partner... Right? Has some things that she needs to work on, and if she'll give me five minutes, I'll tell her, but it's not my job to tell her. I need to be working on me. Right? Take, take, take the log out of your own eye, right? Take the plank out of your own eye. I'm going to continue reading this because I want to get to the to, to, to verse 5. It says, so instead they should teach others what is good. And when I, when I thought about that, I'm like, well, what, what should women be teaching other women? I thought about my wife, okay? I thought about how when we first got together, she was a young, scared, brand new mama. Very unprepared to be a wife. And a mother. What should the women be teaching the younger women? You know, not knowing how to spend money and buy groceries, that became a problem. Not knowing how to cook food and season it right, that became a problem. No, really. I told her, do you, do you even taste this before you give it to us? Ooh, Brother Tommy was rough, huh? I have grown to love that woman so much because she's tried so hard to be a thousand times better than she was when we first got together. Amen. Amen. <laughs> what should the women be teaching? <sighs> it ain't my, it ain't my kids. Even the men. What should we be teaching each other? We should be getting together. Maybe we need to do a barbecue so that more young men come. You have free food, people show up, I see. Verse 4 says that these older women must train the younger women to love their husbands and their children. Wow. That's pretty good. That affects the relationship, right? When it looks like all she does is love the kids. She don't love me. She loves them more than she loves me, right? There was a little bit extra. I wanted it, but they gave it to, gave it to the kid. I'm just trying to be funny. Verse 5 says, <clears throat> To live wisely, be pure, to work in their homes, to do good, and to be submissive to their husbands. That word right there, submissive, has people ready to fight. What does it mean to submit yourself to your husband? Huh? You remember how we started this? I grabbed one side and my partner grabbed the other side. We're equal. But the word of God says that he is the high priest of the home. 
And he is going to be held responsible for everything you did in that home. You can turn to Ephesians chapter 5, 21, please. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 21. My Bible says, And further you will submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. So why do you submit to your husband? Because you love the Lord. Not because you're less than. Not because she's weaker. Because you love the Lord. Does that make sense? The Bible is telling you to submit yourself to your husband. Yes, your idea might be better. And yes, you guys might have to do it again after he finds out that his idea was wrong. <laughs> right? We have to allow the Spirit of God to do its job. We have to allow the Word of God to do its job. Man, I can tell you something, but are you going to listen? The last part of that verse, verse 5 says, they will, <clears throat> then they will not bring shame on the word of God. I don't want to do anything that brings shame to God. I want my life. I want my children. I want my job. I want my everything, what I do, to bring honor and glory to the Lord. This this whole uh, uh, preparation to the, to the conference, my wife was using words like power couple. We have to be so in sync with each other that everything we do just glorifies the Lord. Some of us are not there. Me and my wife are not there 100% and we're working on it. We're working on it so much that we're seeking other places to be filled so that we can bring it back here. Unselfish decisions. Right? God has a design for the family and the household. But we have to get into the word of God to see what that is. Some of us grew up with good examples. Some of us grew up with examples that were not that good. Right? But God has unconditional love for each and every one of us. Amen. I love you guys and I thank you. My time is over. There is more to the lesson. There are more scriptures. If you don't have a book, go buy one. Study. Get into your word. Thank you, Brother Eric. Thank you, uh, Brother Paul. Sister Lynn. You coming up, sister? Come on. Sister, Karina. Sister Karina, you can mute this. Amen. Amen. Praise God. We have something to learn every day of our lives, and no matter how old we are or how young we are or how we think everything is so good and, and my, my home is perfect, I don't need to hear this. No, no. There's always room for improvement in our lives. God has something for each and every one of us, and and as we hear God's word, as we allow him to minister to our hearts and to our lives, we're just so thankful for him that uh, the Holy Spirit comes and speaks to us. Amen. He comes and speaks to us and, and he ministers to us in many, many different ways. And as we thank God and <clears throat> for his goodness and his love, and, and yes, that's the word that I've just been thinking about. Here it's God's goodness. 
His goodness, his goodness is just, he is just, his goodness just pours out to us. So we must learn to give to others just as well. As we sing this chorus before we read our prayer request today, amen, we thank the Lord for the opportunity for all things. I love you, Lord, and I lift my voice. I love you, Lord. And I lift my voice to worship you with all my soul. Rejoice, take joy, my King. Let it be, let it be a sweet, sweet sound in your ear. Tell them you love them this morning. Oh, I love you, Lord, and I lift my Joy, take joy, my King, in what you hear. Let it be a sweet, sweet sound in your ear. Father, we are so thankful for the privilege and the opportunity that you give us to intercede and stand in the gap for the prayer requests and the need that comes through the airwaves, Lord, through the internet and through our brother and sister here today, Lord. Lord, our prayer, Lord God, as we bring, Lord God, Sister Rosie's son, Manny. Lord, you know that we have placed Manny into your hands, Lord God. Daily in our prayers, we know that you have things under control. Help Sister Rosie, Lord God, to continue to build her faith and her trust in you, that you have all things under control, Father. We place Manny into your hands. And Sister Jenny is asking prayer for Priscilla. She's having a, a few more symptoms of, of what she's been going through, Lord God. Father, you know every area of her life, Father God. We pray, Holy Spirit, that lives in her, that would bring the, the revision in her, in her brain, Lord, in her mind. Help her, Lord God, as she goes through these areas, as her family goes through this with her, Lord God, her mom, her husband, her son, Lord Jesus. Help them that they may, Lord God, understand how they can help her. Most of all, as we pray and stand in the gap for Sister Priscilla. We pray, Lord God, for um, Sister Rita's sister-in-law, that the Lord would help them, Lord Jesus, that he would help them because uh, uh, her husband, her sister-in-law's husband found out that he has cancer in his stomach. Father, you know their their lives. You know their hearts. You know their faith. Lord God, as our sister Rita is bringing this prayer request before your throne of grace, we gather with her, Lord God, and we bring her brother-in-law, Lord God, before your throne of grace and mercy, Lord Jesus. Be merciful on them. And she's also praying for her grandson, Anthony, Lord, that 
that you know everything in his life. You know his ins and you know his outs. You know his coming and you know his going, Lord God. We pray that your hand would continuously be with him, Lord God, as he learns to call upon the name of the Lord. We are so thankful for that, Father. And Brother Ray is asking for his wife, Priscilla, Lord God, for healing. You know that prayer be for a husband and their wives, Lord God, that you would, Lord, minister unto her physical body, Lord Jesus. Brother Ray knows that sometimes there's nothing he could do but to call upon the name of the Lord, but to stand in the gap for them. Prayer for Daniel, Lord God to deal with mom's illness that Daniel might not understand and father help him Lord God that as brother Ray and mom and grandma talks to him about what's going on with mom Lord only you can give Daniel the peace that's needed in his life Lord Jesus brother Ray's asking for his finances for a, a car a new car that is needed in his life Lord God you know Lord God the necessity Lord you know the needs and you know the wants Lord, you will grant us the desires of our hearts as Lord God, brother Ray, Lord God, he brings to you, Lord God, his, his request for his family, Father God, so that he can go and come, Lord, and wherever he might be, he would always be an example for you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. We pray, Lord God, for Teresa, Lord Jesus, Teresa Rivera that is asking for the Mireles family, the loss of their brother Jesse. And Father, the, the valley of grief is not an easy area to go through, Lord God. We want to pray along with Teresa, Lord God. Lord, she trusts in you. She has faith in you, Lord God, that, Lord, you will give them the comfort and the peace that they need in their lives, Lord. And Father, we pray for Christian, Lord God, Lord, that you would watch Watch over Christian, Lord God. You know everything in Christian's life, Father God. You know his going and you know his coming, Father. Father, we pray that you will continue, Lord God, to put people in his pathway to encourage him. We pray, Lord God, for Adrian Ross, Lord Jesus. Lord, we're praying for uh, his mom that she has been uh, falling a lot. Amen. That there be no broken bones. And Lord, our brother Adrian is always asking for his family his mom Lord God and father his prayer is that she she would Lord God stabilize and you would help her to be stabled in her walk Lord God so that she does not fall Lord God and have any broken bones and father we we unite our prayers with our brother Adrian today that you would minister unto each and every one of them Lord Jesus knowing that there is nothing impossible for you Lord we pray for sister Velia Lord God sister Velia as she's working, Lord God, to try to get her health back, Father, her eyesight, Lord Jesus. Father, that you would move in her, help her, Lord God, during her times. Father, only you, Lord God, know how to be there. Lord, when no one else is around, it's only her and you, Father. Thank you because you are the way, you are truth, and you are life. And Lord, we love you with all our heart, soul, body, spirit, and mind. May we learn your word, Lord God, to put it to our hearts and continue Lord God to worship you in Jesus name with all my soul rejoice take joy my key in what you hear let it Let's tell him I love you, Lord, one more time. Oh, I love you, Lord. And I lift my voice. And I, I lift my voice to, to worship you with all my
let it be, let it be a sweet, sweet sound in your ears. Let it be, let it be, let it be, let it be a sweet, sweet sound in your ears. Hallelujah. We give God the glory for his love, his mercy for all things in our lives. Amen. As we've entered into a 2023 year, amen. God is good. Amen. We are going to be blessed. Amen. As he opens the windows of heaven, we'll be there to worship, to praise, to give him honor, give him glory, magnify him for who he is. I will meet you at the altar tomorrow, 6 o'clock. Amen. As we come for prayer, as we pray for one another, that God would minister to our hearts so that we would minister to others. Amen. And let's pray for our bread program on Tuesday. It was uh, too rainy, flooded out there that we weren't able to distribute, but we're going to try again on, on Tuesday so that God would minister, amen, and make a way, Lord God. And we always pray, okay, Lord, take the rain away until after, after 1 o'clock. <laughs> Praise God. And then Wednesday night, we're back with Sister Angelina. Amen. And her, and her helper, Brother John. Jo Brother John. Brother Joey. Praise Hallelujah. God. Amen. That God would just help them as they continue to walk this journey together in teaching the word of God. We're so thankful, so blessed. We're back on Friday night with the word online. Praise God. And then we're back in Sunday school, Sunday morning, ready to receive God's word as we learn how to better our families and our homes. There's always room for improvement amen there's always something we can better do so we are thankful for that and we give god the glory for all things we're going to be preparing for our rally that is going to be here february the 14th which is the second saturday of the month and we are excited for that praise god we're going to pray for our brothers and sisters uh our rally was canceled last last week because of the flooding in merced and La Grand area. You know, there's a lot of flooding. Be careful where you go. Be careful if there's waters on the streets. Try, do not try to get your car through there. So many people get stuck. So don't try to go into those deep waters. Amen. Whatever you can do, pray for one another. Amen. Help one another, whatever needs to be done, so that we can be able to, to thank the Lord for his goodness and his mercy. Amen. February 11th rally. Oh, I thought it was the 14th. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Well, it's the second Saturday of the oh. month. Praise God. Thank you. Praise the Lord. We'll have some flyers out. And as we begin to get ready for that, thank the Lord for his goodness and his mercy. Amen. I'm, I'm glad to be. You know, I missed you all. Oh. Amen. I really did miss you all. Praise God. Praise God. You were at heart with me in Hawaii, and I, I thank the Lord for that. Praise God. I was, thinking, I was thinking about you, Sister Angelina. I said, her son is right here. When she comes here to Kauai, amen, guess who's going to go? <laughs> Praise the Lord. God is good for, with us all the time. Praise the Lord for all things. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we're just so thankful to be in the house of God this morning, to worship and to praise. Some might have wanted to be here, Lord God, but couldn't. Others, they're just, Lord God, not ready there. But, Father, we ask us, ask, Lord God, to get us ready, Father. Get us ready, Lord God, to strengthen one another, to help each other, to assemble with each other, Father God. We need each other, Lord, in every area. Iron sharpens iron so that we can... We 
we can, Lord God, pour into each other. We're thankful, Lord God, for all things. And Lord, that you would continue to remind us in our word. And when we get into our word, when we pray, when we sing, when we fellowship, to remember how good you are to us, Father God. You are so faithful in all things. And we want to give you praise and thanksgiving. Thank you, Lord, because we know who we are in you. We are the head and not the tail. We are on top and not on bottom. And with this, Father, we lift our heads to be, Lord God, to know that we are called the children of the Most High God. Help us to live the life. Help us, Lord God, to be good testimonies of who we are in Christ Jesus. For this, we give you praise and thanksgiving. And the church says, Amen. God bless you on Facebook. Amen.